Alrighty guys, how's it going? I wanted to do a uh, overview and review of my 2022 Tesla Model 3. I've had this car for just under 20,000 miles now. We're about 200 miles away from that milestone. And honestly, I've never put that many miles on a car before. Usually I kind of sell stuff within a year. And this is the first car I've had that has really um, encouraged me to drive so much more than I normally do. Uh, I've been doing DoorDash in this car, Uber Eats, uh, Grubhub, all kinds of deliveries in this car. I commute to school in this car. Um, it's really been amazing, but it hasn't been without its flaws, though. So first off, let's get all the negative stuff out of the way. This car just eats tires, and I'm not the uh, most conservative driver, let's say. Um, so the primacy has lasted me exactly 10,000 miles, and... So I put these on at 10,000 miles. These are the Firestone Indy 500s. They're really good. They're, I feel like they're kind of a cheater tire because they're just so grippy. I also went two sizes up to 255s instead of 235s. So they're not stretched anymore. They actually fill it out pretty well. And I probably have, I don't know, probably another three, 4,000 miles out of them. These ones aren't going to last much longer than the Primacies did. But they are lasting longer and the ride is so much smoother than the Primacies. And... They were cheaper too, way cheaper than Primacy's. So uh, if you have a Tesla or any other uh, car that you want to drive fast, I highly recommend these as a great daily driver tire. Really uh, made the car come alive. Another quality control item that I've had with this car is when I first got it, uh, both headlights and both fog lights got water in them. So I had to have all of them replaced immediately. And this fog light was just replaced again two weeks ago for the same issue, getting water in it. Um, I've also had this replaced twice now, and it's still, even after it getting replaced, is lifting. And the last time they did that, the door panel got um, lifted up, the, the clip wasn't in, so I could get a whole new door panel replaced because it got bent from being out for too long. So that stinks. I've also had both bumpers replaced because of thin paint. And, oh, this door over here, was uh allegedly bent from the factory so they replaced this whole door and then after that they didn't put it in right and when you opened it it made this noise this door is broken they replaced this whole door under warranty and it sucks they messed the paint on the bolts up this is loose so but i'm gonna have that fixed but test the build quality issues aside what does it look like outside as you can see it has now since been fixed I've also had some issues with the trunk. Uh, the power trunk stopped working once, and also the alignment is still horrible, even though they say it's in spec. I don't believe them, because you have a very nice tight gap over here, and then it just, like, lifting up over here. You can push on it, just terrible. And it's also leaked once. I had them look at it for leaking. They said it was fine, I don't know what they did, but it was leaking, like, right where that little light is it would come in through here and drip onto the mat it wasn't a lot but i still had to look at it so i don't know what they did but it hasn't been uh doing that since the last big issue i've had with this was at about three thousand miles the oil pump for the front motor failed and warranty covered that but that would have been about a four thousand dollar part to replace there's this big huge piece of aluminum but it was replaced under warranty. They gave me a loaner car and such is life. I went on my way, but I'm really glad that happened under warranty and not out of warranty. But I think since that's power term related, this has 120,000 mile eight year warranty. So I think it would have been covered under that. So I shouldn't have to worry about anything that expensive happening again. Now let's talk about some of the things that I've done to this car to make it a better daily driver. One of the first things I did was I put these mud flaps on. They were like 30 bucks on Amazon. Honestly, not too impressed with them. They're kind of loose. They've all like done this to the paint because they move around a lot. And so this, I think, is scratched off paint. So I'm kind of pissed about it. But at this point, what are you going to do? I'm not going to take them off and leave that there. So uh, that's a part of the car now. And I also did window tint. I got 5% uh, in the back and 70 in the front. And I really wish I did the windshield because I just did the sides with ceramic. So when I'm driving, there's like no heat coming through these side windows. But in the moment I turn, the sun's facing me head on, I get so much heat through this windshield. So I'm probably gonna get this windshield tinted at some point to uh, match that. I also put in these sunshades to really block out the heat. 
Uh, so far, I've really enjoyed them. This one has, it's like a, a mesh and then there's a tarp behind it. The back one is just the mesh because it cannot keep the tarp in without it flapping in the wind when the windows are down for some reason. So that's whatever. And then you still can see out the back, but it's already horrible visibility as it is out of this car. So it doesn't really uh, make a difference. And the added heat rejection is great. And frankly, the glass is so tinted dark as it is, you really can't see anything during the day anyways. And at night, you certainly can't see the stars. So it's honestly like pointless to have the glass roof exposed. A couple other mods that I've done was I switched out the wood trim from a black seat car because I just really like having wood trim in a car, especially one that's this fancy. It feels more luxurious to me. Um, but I also really wanted the white seats because I feel like they are a little bit softer and they also cut down on heat. So that's cool. I've got this little pillow from my Prius and I have these LED lights that are here and on the dash and they're on the back of the seats. And uh, at night it looks really sick. So overall, what do I think of the styling? Well, that's subjective, but personally, I feel like this car leaves something to be desired. I feel like a BMW 4 Series looks way more aggressive than this with the more uh, slanted roof and just the vents that a car with an engine has looks more aggressive. This car doesn't have any vents because it doesn't need to have any vents, which is cool because I can drive this car really hard and then go park it in my garage and there's no heat that comes out. There's no smells. So that's really cool. But it just, I don't know, a car looks kind of dull. I feel like a BMW is really calling my name in terms of the passion involved. And then also with it not making any noise, there's no soul to the car. It's just, it's it, dynamically, it drives amazing, but it just doesn't have that connection that I would have in a car with a manual transmission and an engine and, you know, a lot of noise. So after 20,000 miles, how do I really feel about owning this car? Well, it's kind of a love-hate relationship. Like I mentioned before with the styling not being really to my taste. Um, but the car drives so well. Like, like I mentioned, I, I'm someone who likes to push the car a little bit. And this car does kind of drive like magic. I'm not going to lie. It's in the corners with the all-wheel drive, the torque vectoring. It has an amazing character of, of confidence and grip that a lot of other cars just don't have. But at the same time, because it's so good, I don't really feel necessary. I feel like the car kind of does everything. And so because of that, it's just a little tough to recommend to another car enthusiast. To a normal person, oh my God, this car is probably the best daily driver car you could ever have i can go to school park it there charge it come back it's charged i never go to the gas station it's very cheap in my area gas is over six dollars and i'm really glad i'm not buying premium fuel on a bmw that's getting 18 20 miles per gallon for for the same performance that this car has it really is incredible that it does all of this with the cheap fueling Another just great daily aspect of it is this right here, the wireless charger with the updated console for 2021. It, as when I'm doing DoorDash, it's great. I just put my phone there, it charges. I can see the map because you can't really sync the map with the car that well. That is one thing that kind of sucks because it doesn't have Apple CarPlay. You can't, you have to look at the map on your phone when you're dashing because you're, you're doing so many addresses in such little time that yes, you could open maps and then share it to the car, but it's just an extra thing that when you're just trying to go, 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 it's not really worth the time. So, but this is a nice angle, although I do have a larger phone, so the top does get cut off. This car has definitely given me a tough dilemma because if I ever want to sell it, there really is not anything else that can give me this kind of experience for what this car costs. I mean, the fact that I get updates all the time i get new features right like literally just yesterday i got an update that i can open my driver's door with my phone it will pop the door for me it basically will do this with with the phone it just does it opens it like that little inch with the electric release and i can do that from my phone now it's a gimmick but it's fun and it's cool that it just showed up and it was not something i bought the car with so that aspect of it has been really cool to get updates all the time. It really keeps the car fresh. It keeps it modern. Um, that's definitely something that 
I keep coming back to BMWs, but it's like a 2018 BMW, that's it. That's all you got. There's nothing new coming to that. They've already moved on to a new generation and they don't really care about you with the last gen car. So for, for this, it's really cool that like you can have a 2018 or a 2022, now 23. And for the most part, this screen is the same. I know they just updated the processors and there is a couple features that I don't get like the heated windshield wipers. But I mean, other than that, most of the software is the same. I still get updates with the games. I can still go in and, you know, watch Netflix and whatever I want. And that's really awesome that I can get these cool updates periodically. And it's it kind of, it's a fun little surprise. You get in your car like, oh, what's new today? Read the update before you go on your drive. And then you test out the new features. Another update the car has gotten that you probably know about if you're a Tesla fanatic. But when you put your signals on, it now puts on the side view cameras and it didn't do that when I bought it. And I'm, it's really great that it has it now. So while I know that it's easy to hate on the Tesla build of quality, it still isn't the same as a BMW or a Volvo or something with the panel gaps. But once you have one, once you drive one, it's so addictive. And it, I understand why in my area, you see a million of them. I mean, in California, they're just, you look at, you get to a stop a stoplight, every single side of the intersection has at least one Tesla, probably two at the intersection. So th that kind of adds to my feeling of like, oh, it's so bland, it's so boring, it just looks like an appliance car. Because for most people it is, it is an appliance car and it's really good at being a daily, but it also is really good at being a performance driven car kind of like that is where you can go in the back roads like I am today and hustle the car and it's it's dynamic, it's connected, it can do it. So do I recommend a Tesla Model 3? Yes, absolutely. I think it's way better than a C-Class Mercedes or an Audi A4. Um, I actually had an Audi A5 as a loaner car and it felt, it was a very nice interior, but it felt so slow after getting out of this car, which I was really surprised by because three years ago I had a 2004 runner and I would have been like, Oh my God, a new Audi. This is so fast. So, uh, it's kind of crazy how this, how this car will change your perceptive of, of other cars. With my ownership of this, I've had two thoughts of this car. I thought either a, I would have this car for a year and get rid of it. And I'm kind of at that point of it's been a year and I don't really want to get rid of it, but I also do want, I do really want a BMW, but I just can't, make that make sense financially or realistically, honestly. The second thing was I would get rid of it after it hits 50,000 miles and that uh, everything else warranty wears out because I have had a lot of little tiny issues around the car that I feel like this car honestly goes into service at least once a month, I'm not gonna lie. But I'm also picky about it. If you don't care, you know, you probably won't have as many issues as I, as I have. Um, so I, I thought about that. And I've also thought about you know, just saying screw it and keeping this car for 100,000 miles because I really don't see a reason why I couldn't do that. I've seen many other Model 3s hit over 100,000 miles and everyone talks about how, oh, I only did it on one set of tires and that's the only thing I've ever done, which I don't believe that. But, um, you know, there really is not a lot of maintenance. I mean, in the last 20,000 miles, my out-of-pocket expenses for this car have been the modifications I've done and the tires, one set of tires and one set of brakes and that would and some windshield wipers and washer fluid that's it if i had a and the charging has only been like i don't know maybe a hundred dollars a month for driving two three thousand miles a month it really hasn't been that bad because i usually charge it at night um versus let's say a bmw 440i i would have probably still done tires and brakes but i would have had to do four oil changes by now and any other, you know, fluids or maintenance stuff that those cars would require. Another kind of livability quirk I've had was that there was some rattles in this car. So I took both of the front pillars off and the, uh, the dash tray and a couple pieces behind there. And I covered them all with uh, kill mat. It's like a sound deadening material. And now when you hit it, it feels more solid compared to the hollow more hollower stuff like this it's kind of hollow sounding but this a little bit denser sounding because all this is is just a thin sheet of plastic 
that's covered in this kind of fabric-y material. It's really thin, really chintzy, and because of that, it will reverberate any vibrations or noises. So if you stick some, it's like an adhesive kind of tar-like uh, tar stuff, and when you put that on, it adds weight, and it kind of muffles any of that noise. And this is what that stuff looks like. I added it up here to the back of the rear shelf as well. This is where the speakers are um, in the rear deck, and it sounds really solid. Now, before this was also kind of tinny, and I also took out the whole trunk and filled all of that with this same stuff. But otherwise, for the most part, um, with my other cars, I've taken them completely apart for sound editing. I've taken the carpets out, the seats out, the door panels, and done all of that so this car is pretty nice so i don't need to do that in the doors or the floor or anything like that um but just these couple little pieces that did uh didn't meet my standards you might not care okay so my perspective has changed about wanting a bmw and not appreciating the tesla that much i uh just got my foreigner back and the tank was completely empty and running late for class had to go and get gas in it and 17 gallons was $95. And this car gets like 17 miles per gallon. So you know what? Tesla's really good. <laughs> I can uh, I can charge at home for pretty much close to nothing. Or when I'm out of the charger, it's 10, 15 bucks. And I've put 20,000 miles on my car in the last 10 months because it's been so cheap to fuel. And I've just totally forgotten how terrible it is to buy gas. So no, I no longer want a BMW. Tesla for the win, best daily ever. With gas being $6 a gallon, that would be insanely expensive for, you know, arguably the same performance and the same kind of car. So this just makes a lot of sense. So owner review, I would say this car is a solid eight out of 10. Would recommend, but definitely buy one new. I would not get a used one.